stain of course. No stain.
Good afternoon, councillors, members of the public, officers. Welcome along. I declare this meeting open. Under announcements, I want to congratulate and thank uh, all the city staff and councillors who were involved in planning and delivery of the Kambana Bay official opening last Saturday. It was a fantastic day. Thousands of our residents and others were there enjoying a magnificent occasion. So thank you very much to all of those involved. Councillors, tonight we have apologies from uh, Councillors Brown and Hayward. Declaration of interest, I've declared a financial interest in item 10.5.1. Are there any further declarations of interest? Thank you. Seven point one one minutes of the last council meeting. Confirmed. Thank you, Councillor Cook. Move, Councillor Steele. All in favour? It's carried unanimously. Thank you. Seven one two. Uh, I want to leave out the Heritage Advisory Committee for a second. Can someone move that we? receive, accept and note the Roadwise Committee minutes of the 18th of December. Councillor Steele, seconder. Councillor McCleary, all in favour? That's carried. Councillor, bring to your attention the Heritage Committee minutes of the 13th of December 2017 and item 10.2 uh, of that committee meeting. At that stage, in dealing with item 10.2, to my reading, there was no quorum, yet the committee made a, a recommendation. So, as there was no quorum, that becomes ultra vires, that particular item. So, what I'm seeking for is someone to move that we accept and note the Heritage Advisory Committee minutes of the 13th of December 2017, with exception of item 10.2, as it was ultra vires. Someone prepared to move that way? Councillor Kelly? So can I just ask a question before we make a decision? Councillor Kelly has moved. Councillor Warnock, second. Thank you. Question? Uh, thank you, sir. Just in relation to that, and there's also at 10.1 the City of Bunbury place naming. So there was a decision made there too. So is that not ultra vires as well? At item 10.2, <coughs> item Councillor Steck, you'll find that uh, some members of that committee left the meeting because they declared an interest. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Thank you. Do we have any petitions, councillors? There are no requests for presentations tonight. Go on to 8.4. <coughs> Someone prepared to move. Councillor Cook's report be received. Councillor McGuinness, seconded. Councillor McGuell, all in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thanks very much, Councillor Cook. Councillors, coming out for discussion <coughs> at this stage is item 10.11, 10.12 and 10.51. Are there any other items that wish to be raised? Can I someone move the balance? Councillor Cook, second up. Councillor McGuinness, all in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Ten point one one. We have uh, an executive recommendation and a committee recommendation. Someone prepared to move either one, Councillor Kelly. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I move the uh, uh, the Heritage Advisory Committee recommendation as it is there. One, two, and three. Second up, Councillor McCleary. Is there likely to be any debate? I'll put it all in favour. Those against, one against, that's carried. Thank you. Ten one two again, we have two recommendations there, an executive recommendation and a heritage advisory committee recommendation. I'm prepared to accept either one. Councillor Kelly. Yeah, Mr Mayor. The Heritage Advisory Committee recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Second up, 
Councillor McCleary, likely to be any debate? I'll put it all in favour. Those against? One against. That's carried. Thank you. Councillor McGuill. Thank you, councillors. Uh, we're dealing with 10.5.1. Uh, do we have a mover for that executive recommendation? Thank you, Councillor McLeary. Seconder. Councillor Gelly. Uh, is there likely to be any debate on this item? I'll put it then. All those in favour? It's carried. Thank you. We go to motions on notice. Councillor Kelly? Is there a seconder? Councillor Smith? Uh, Councillor Kelly? Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, Councillor, this is a crucial piece of infrastructure um, which is urgently needed um, and it fits right into the accessible um, philosophy that our council has taken. Uh, this pathway is key to a link linkage and uh, indeed the road has become quite hazardous. I've spoken to a number of um, uh, uh, residents up there. Um, it includes heavy traffic, mums, prams, mums and dads and prams, disabled people, seniors and kids. And it finishes off the link if we can get this pathway uh, going. Now on page 37 uh, in the officer's comments, the prioritisation model that's been developed to assess the request for footpaths is there. And in doing a tick uh, against them, it passed muster quite easily. It's a bit unorthodox in the context of the fact that I'm asking for funds to be allocated from budget surplus. Um, but before anybody uh, might want to argue the, the point about them jumping the queue, um, I will say that if this one gets up, then uh, the people behind in the queue move up one notch which I've got no doubt that all of these pathways that are listed in our priority uh, list uh, for uh, the future are all worthy. Uh, this one, I believe, from the contacts I've had uh, with the local residents is uh, just as worthy and perhaps just a little bit more. Given uh, the way the farmer's market has been so successful, given that it's the last little link, 400 metres to get uh, from Incy Road down to the farmer's market, uh, given that there are more people living in uh, the area and more people using that particular path. Uh, and I also acknowledge the officer recommendation uh, that we refer to the 2018-19 uh, budget for further consideration, um, our allocation of one kilometre of foot, new footpath each year. I believe firmly that we need to uh, keep uh, uh, that uh, up and running, uh, make sure that we keep uh, contemporary with what we're doing with our pathways. However, uh, the uh, motion is as uh, read that the City of Bunbury allocates 75000 I believe it can be done for that from the projected surplus uh, in the 2017-18 budget uh, to complete this pathway link, which I think is quite worthy. So thank you. I urge councillors to support the motion. Councillor Smith. <coughs> Councillor Kelly's comments. I noticed yesterday when we were out and about in other parts of Bunbury that we were watching people riding their bicycles on the verge, on, on the grass with gravel and it was sloped and all the rest of it. So if we can get more of these uh, footpaths in, I think they're a safety measure as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be speaking against this. There are a few elements, councillors. I was. I sympathise with the, the fact that we have a, a person in that street with a disability I'm not sure if we're aware of um, people residing in those other streets with a higher priority if they've got disabilities as well. We need to protect the integrity of our budget process. We have a very robust budget process which we uh, adhere to. Um, we also have a very um, robust model for determining what paths are built and when, and uh, that's been pointed out uh, by Councillor Kelly in terms of the, the priorities that we have. So we have both those um, 
approach is endorsed by the City Council. Uh, I also note that um, the officers believe that this will require $90,000 to construct rather than $75,000 to construct. And they also there's a, a word of caution there from our finance team saying, well, the surplus is there for emergency or urgent matters or unforeseen matters. So there are, there are a number of elements to my mind that compel me to not support this, notwithstanding that there is this gentleman who has a, a disability in that street. So I'm councillors in, in the interest of protecting the integrity of the budget process the integrity of the model that we all adopted for footpath determination in terms of priorities, I urge you to vote against this. It's another speaker for Councillor Steele. Thank you. I put safety before money, so I will be voting for this. This man has come to us with an issue. The, the farmer's market has grown exponentially. The, the amount of traffic at, along that road has grown. So we can only embrace that this man has come to us saying that he has an issue. Councillor Kelly has come to us um, asking for us to vote for this, so I urge you to do that. Thank you. Further speaker, against? Sorry, sir, can I just ask a question? Sure. Sorry, I'll get on my feet. Um, just in relation to some of the comments that have been made in the room, um, is there any opportunity for retrospective requests for the farmers market to put in, say, a contribution to a footpath, considering they're causing the problem? Well, Councillor Stick, that's a separate matter. It's related, but it is separate to this matter under discussion right now. Is there a further speaker against Councillor Warnock? Thanks, Mr Mayor. Uh, look, I appreciate, like the Mayor said, the, uh, this gentleman's predicament, and I do appreciate the need for footpaths in Bunbury. So I do sympathise with this gentleman and would love every pathway and road to be accessible right now to everyone. Unfortunately, we're not able to make that happen for everyone immediately, which is why our officers invested a lot of time and expertise into a footpath prioritisation model, which assesses all footpaths against a criteria, including safety, and comes up with a priority schedule. So this is a schedule that was presented to the council just over a year ago and I don't recall anyone having an issue with it at the time. I don't think it's appropriate for us to second guess our officers in their everyday operations, make changes to a procedure on the run, or introduce side doors which undermine the very good work that our officers do. This particular footpath is on the schedule for 1920 and will be addressed. It would not be fair for this footpath to be reprioritised over higher priority footpaths using criteria which isn't in the footpath prioritisation model. You might as well throw our model out of the window. Speaker 4, yes. Councillor McCleary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr Mayor, the farmers market is really gets very congested and if there's any way that we can encourage cars to stay home and for people to walk to the farmers market, I think this is one of them. Yes, there is at the moment, we're talking about a gentleman that's disabled, but I want to look at the whole community, not just at one person. And the words, our budget is in good shape, okay? It can afford to make variables. And I would like for us as councillors to actually give a listen, hear what our community is saying, and not just give them lip service. We've, we've been, we know that over at the farmer's market that it is difficult with traffic. If this is a chance for us to alleviate maybe 50 or 100 vehicles because people will cycle onto the cycle path, will walk down there, will jump on their trolleys, I think we should encourage this. Yes, we do have a plan, but always we need flexibility. So I'm asking councillors to take on into consideration, flex a little, and let's work with our community and, and also, by doing this, we will allow Farmers Market to have at least 50 cars less there. Thank you. Speaker against. Councillor Cook. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I will be speaking against this item, even though it's very dear to my heart. Um, and I will foreshadow uh, moving the office recommendation if this one is, is lost. Um, I don't believe this is the place to debate this particular issue. Um, we've got Marcia coming up. We've, um, we've got a... a 
We're aiming for the most accessible regional city in Australia by 2020. Uh, but the time to do this is during budget consideration and uh, I firmly believe that we need to allocate some money to Marcia in the budget and uh, perhaps this footpath could, uh, will come out of that wash. But I don't believe that this is the, the time or place to debate it. The budget discussion is the time to debate it. I will be voting against it and foreshadowing the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker 4, <coughs> Councillor Stick. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Well, well councillors, I don't know what place is, is really more appropriate than here inside the chamber. And it brings me to mind of an occasion when I veered off the budget for an 11-year-old boy that wanted a skate park in Glen Iris. Today it exists. Um, that is a role of a councillor, to put up a motion on notice. And it is always you know, accepted from the last 12 years that I've been inside a chamber. So I urge you to support the motion, and when a councillor puts up a motion on notice, support it. Speak against Councillor McGuill. Is that on? Thank you. I was doing, uh, throwing with this uh, motion after I had a phone call from Monday about um, the, very, the same footpath um, from a totally different gentleman that wasn't related to this. Um, but the fact was that, as, as uh, Councillor Cook mentioned, we have to deal with this with, with budget process. So um, I wasn't going to bother speaking to because I'd made up my decision, but Councillor Steck just highlighted the fact that we should support any motion on notice, which I think this is the, the issue that comes to hand here. If we go and support um, this motion on notice, what's to say someone else is going to come back next week and say, well, we need a footpath here, so can we get another $50,000 and we're we'll in the exact same situation? We have, a foot, we have the budget process in place and we have the footpath um, priority model in place. So I'm all for uh, supporting the officer's recommendation, reviewing this at the budget um, time and potentially maybe even increasing that 1K um, per year thing. So I'm happy to look at those other alternatives, but right now I can't support this because we purely, it's just outside our scope of the budget. Speaker 4, Councillor McGuinness. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor and Councillors. Obviously there's a, a lot of people on both sides of this. Um, I want to agree with a lot of things that have been said. Uh, and with Councillor McGuell just speaking then, when we have a good reason and it's been demonstrated why and how and how the community need it, then it is our job as councillors to be leaders and to take charge on this. We do have the funds to do it. We're talking about a budget surplus here, so it's not that like we don't have the funds to do it. Uh, I'll be voting for it and I would hope that, uh, that councillors actually see that this is uh, something that the community have asked for, that we, had, we have the money there, we have a, or the, the ability to do it, uh, and I think we should get on and do it. Speaker against. <clears throat> Councillor Kelly, close, thank you. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, just to say uh, thanks for those words, mm -hmm. Councillor McGuinness, because I think it is a matter of now. Uh, I'd just like to make the point that it's not just one gentleman. There are quite a few people using that road, and it's not just one person I've spoken to either, although he, uh, and with uh, great respect for his ability to uh, keep at it, because he's been at this for some time, uh, to try and get this uh, footpath sorted out, not only for himself, uh, with his disability, but uh, also for uh, the folk that live in his neighbourhood. So I think, uh, again, it's a crucial piece of infrastructure. I think uh, it's something that's come to this council for a decision. Yes, it is outside budget. However, uh, we are coming into a budget process whereby we will need to adjust um, uh, the cut of our cloth, I imagine. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm quite convinced that this is a right decision to make to support uh, the allocation uh, to the project and uh, urge councillors to support it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> this requires an absolute majority. All those in favour, please indicate. <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those against? It doesn't have an absolute majority. It's lost. Councillor Cook, you foreshadowed. Sorry, Mr Mayor, I would like to move the officer recommendation that Council refer the matter to the 2018-19 budget deliberations for further consideration regarding the allocation of one, one kilometre of new footpath each year as per the current long-term financial plan. Thank Is there you. a seconder to that? Councillor McGuell. Is there likely to be any further debate, councillors? I'll put it all in favour. Those against? That's carried. Thank you.
Can I have someone move that we go behind closed doors? Councillor Cook, Councillor McCleary, all in favour? That's carried, thank you. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. We're dealing with some confidential matters now. We will resume shortly. back on there. Yep. Okay, thanks ladies and gentlemen. The council <coughs> just, it's a fairly long, long, uh, just bear with me, I've, I've got to publicly read out this, uh, the resolution of council. So, uh, in relation to the uh, five strategic sites, uh, the council noted the information provided with regards to tender A04991 within the report. Two, not accept the tenders received for lot 66 and 497 Ocean Drive by the Full Family Trust. Authorise the Chief Executive Officer to commence negotiations with any agreed position reached to be referred to Council for further consideration subject to the following conditions. All further negotiations are to be completed within six months from the non-acceptance of the tender. Should, it, should the properties not be under contract following further negotiation within the six months time frame, they will be made available to the open market for disposal by way of sale or lease. Three, the disposal of the land is publicly advertised in accordance with section 3.58 of the Local Government Act 1995. Uh, three, not accept the tender received for lot 891 Clifton Street by Universal Living and authorise the CEO to commence negotiations with any agreed position reached to be referred to Council for further consideration subject to the following conditions. All further negotiations are to be completed within six months from the non-acceptance of the tender. Should, any, should the property not be under contract following further negotiation within the six-month time frame, it will be made available to the open market for disposal by way of sale or lease. Four, not accept the tender received for lot 1881 Combana Drive by Discovery Holiday Parks and authorise the CEO to commence negotiations with Discovery Holiday Parks generally based on the term sheet attached to this report, which includes the sale of lot 1881 Combana Drive the long-term lease of lot 752, Combana Drive, and the development of a water playground and lease over Sykes Foreshore. B, should the property not be under contract following further negotiation within the six-month time frame, it will be made available to the open market for disposable way of sale or lease. Thank you very much, councillors, officers and members of the public for attending. I declare the meeting closed at 5.59pm.